Hey guys, so as the video states, uh, I'm just going to show you what it's like to open up DCS and jump into a multiplayer server um, without cutting the video or anything like that. So you can see uh, kind of like the time scale it takes to get from you know one objective to another, etc. Uh, there's not a whole lot of videos out there um, for DCS World War II anyways that really show what the whole experience is like. Um, a lot of times they're just like uh, kill compilations and uh, stuff like that, cutting to the good stuff, which I which I have done as well. Uh, so I just opened up DCS here, and I'll go over the most popular aircraft to choose from. So on the Allies side, you have the Spitfire, and you really want to choose your plane based on your play style. So the, the Spitfire, for instance, is kind of a low to medium speed turn fighter you're gonna win pretty much every turn fight you're in um, if it's a 1v1 and if you go the route of the Mustang that's more of a kind of an all-around balanced fighter for the allies uh, you can sustain turn fights um, you can get up the out get up to altitude quick um, and you're at much higher speed than the Spitfire so that's kind of a more all-rounder for the Allies. And then those are the two most common planes you'll see on the Allies team. There's not a wide selection of planes in DCS uh, World War II uh, because each plane is fully modeled. So you kind of pick, pick your first plane and kind of get used to that. And for the Axis side, I would say the most popular you'll see online is the BF-109 and this I would say is the most all-rounded uh, fighter for the Axis. You can uh, boom and zoom, uh, you can sustain turn fights, and uh, you can survive in it. It's kind of like the jack of all trades, master of none. And the second most common plane you'll see is the Focke Wolf 190 D9. And this one is, I would say, the most uh, the most survivable. It's uh, really only good for boom and zooming, um, but you can pick your fights. If you're in a tight spot and you know you're about to get shot down, you can outrun almost any aircraft. However, um, you're not going to be able to turn fight with a Spitfire or a Mustang for that for that fact. So you kind of get the one up on the enemy, and you you're pretty deadly. And then once uh, they start to have the advantage on you, you just dip out. And there is a Focke Wolf 190A8. I don't actually own that, so I'm not going to give my opinion on it, but it's fairly new. And so that's it's not as popular as these two planes here. So those are the four most common planes you'll see in multiplayer. So I'm going to go ahead, jump in, and this is the server I normally play on right here, LFDM, and even though I'm from the States, and this is a, I believe this server is in France, um, I don't ever have, like, game-breaking lag. If you see any stutters, it's just because I'm recording in VR, um, and that's pretty taxing on my graphics card. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in here. All right, now you can see the the allies have 24 players and the Axis have 15 players. So I'm gonna try to bring some balance and join the Axis. I'm gonna jump in a BF-109. And briefing. And so on the briefing, you can kind of see how each server chooses to play the game. 
this game is a big sandbox, so, you know, you buy the plane, and then you can choose um, to create missions however you'd like. Each server has its own missions and objectives, but the main point I'm trying to show is that you don't have to worry about hardcore role-playing when you jump in a multiplayer game. You can treat you can treat this like a team deathmatch, if you will. However, uh, each server has their own rules, so you need to make sure that everything that you want to do is allowed. So I know for a fact this server pretty much everything is allowed except uh, strafing airplanes on runways. And if you want to see all the different things you can do to get points for your team, that would be in the briefing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit fly. And I'm going to dump some fuel. I know, I know on this server that I won't have to fly across the channel or anything. Just to make my plane lighter and more competitive. Request refueling. Request Copy. rearming. Copy. And then this isn't going to be a tutorial or anything. So I'm not going to go through the startup procedure. And you can hear my team talking on the radio. So I'm going to turn down my radio volume here. Okay. And that, to use this radio on like a team basis, you have to download this mod called SRS. Otherwise, uh, the game doesn't really have a in-game radio system, if you will. But this mod takes full advantage of the radio controls in the plane. You can talk to your team that way and communicate. Alright, so running up my starter right now. And I'm recording in VR out of my right eye, so it may look a little off-center to you guys, but to me, the plane looks centered in my vision. And it's a good idea to have the world map binded to something on your HOTAS. So, this map, don't stress about, like, these huge maps in this game when you first start playing. You'll just kind of get the feel of them. For this map, I know specifically, like, well, from the briefing and just playing it, that if you draw a line right right here, if you can see my cursor, that kind of separates the Axis and Allies. So I normally fly, crawl, fly along the coast here, and the fights will normally break out around the coast. But like I said, there's different objectives. If you want to go for air kills on this server, normally flying along the coast, you'll find a bunch of people flying around. And there's also some ground targets down through here that you can go choose to fight. Alright, so what I'm pretty much going to do is get get a, at a decent altitude, fly towards the Allies side of the map, and just kind of look for one that's not really paying attention, kind of boom and zoom him, and we'll see how that goes. This video may end with me getting shot down quickly. Because it'd be like that sometimes. And of course, flying with a wingman makes you a lot more survivable. Since I'm just flying solo, 
things are a little bit riskier, so I prefer to go high altitude. So you can see there's a, the all chat there on the left, you can choose to hide that. And then we have a scoreboard just like any, any other multiplayer game. You can sort it by air kills, you can sort it by total score, you can sort it by unit, you kind of want to see how the teams are divided up. You can see there's a lot of Spitfires on the Allies and a lot of BF-109s on the Axis. It's normally how it'll split up. And I'm not really worried so much about the Spitfires as I am the P-51s. The Spitfires you can run away from. The P-51s are a pretty even match. And the key to not getting frustrated is to check your six as much as possible. Because you will get killed without ever seeing your enemy. And start back on the ground. So I'm currently flying deeper into the Axis territory right now. And I'm going to make a slow left turn. And along the coast that way is the Allies base. So I'm just going to get some altitude, and then look for some uh, low-flying Spitfire or Mustang and swoop in on them. So like I said, on this particular server, uh, most fights will occur on the coast here. That black smoke, if I use my VR zoom, you can see it better. That black smoke kind of divides the map from the Axis and the Allies, so that's kind of like your landmark. Once I pass that black smoke uh, towards the west of the map, that will be Allied territory. So you know, once you're up in the air, I mean, I could have beelined it at a low altitude towards that black smoke and got into a fight quick. However, I choose to uh, try to survive more, so I'll play it a bit safer. So that's really how you choose to play the game. You could have a encounter every five minutes if you choose to play that way, or you could have an encounter every like 10 to 15 minutes if you decide to play it really safe. And the server in particular will show uh, air aircraft within a certain distance from you as a black a black uh, black square pixel kind of because uh, spotting is quite difficult. So that that kind of helps you out to see that black uh, dot. And then uh, as you get closer, you're gonna have to ID them. So it's not like a game where there's big red and blue labels over every aircraft showing who's who's uh, who's on whose team. 
you have to get close enough to the enemy to identify them before you shoot them down. And yes, that is difficult at first, but after like a week of playing, it kind of becomes second nature. Because there's only like, like I showed in the beginning of the video, there's only really two aircraft on the Allies team, and two on the Axis that most people use. So you really have to know the shapes of like four different aircraft. And you can see how the teams are made up here. We got some D9s, one A8, and P51s and Spitfires. And you'll really want either a track IR or a VR headset to be competitive. Because uh, as you can see me looking around all the time, spatial awareness is everything. Alright, so out there, you can see what I was talking about, how everyone kind of fights towards that black smoke. There is one, two, three, four, five. Five aircraft over there. And when they're all clumped together like that, it's what, what they call a furball. And I choose to not even go near that. Because they're all turning really tight. And once I start losing my speed and my energy, I'll be stuck in that turn fight. Not really where I want to be. So they, the allies, most of them will take off right right around there right in front of me so I'm gonna kind of get over that that side of the the, uh, the channel and look for someone flying to the east that's not looking yeah you can see it's a mess down there. And around, around four kilometers is where I like to stay. And occasionally allied and Axis bombers will spawn on this server, and you can choose to attack them or escort them, etc. And I know when the bombers are up, there will be a lot more people flying at high altitudes. Right now there's no bombers up, so I'm not too worried about getting jumped. I'm gonna look for look for black dots going to the east. So you see that delta right there? If I go to the map, that's gonna be right here. This is where the allies will normally take off. Now I'm about right here.
Yeah, so those are allied airfields right there. If I fly over them, they, they will shoot flak at me. As well as if I fly over any allied ships in the sea, they will also shoot cannons at me. But at this altitude, I'm not really out of danger of getting hit. Unless it's a lucky strike. Alright, so there's... That looks like a flak shell. So yeah, I'm... There is flak shooting at me right now. And it's probably from a ship that I can't see. And the allies are alerted of my presence right now, since there's flak shooting at me. They'll get a little radio... radio message. But they don't know where I am or how how high I am. So I'm expecting to see somebody soon, given where I'm at. Sorry if this is nauseating watching this on a 2D screen. I don't want to get high enough to contrail, because then my position will really be given away. So I think I start contrailing around 6 kilometers, so I'm not going to try to climb too much higher. Now it could just be that I'm too high. for those black pixels to degenerate if there are aircraft below me. You know, to make it somewhat fair. So I'd have to be looking right at them to see them. I'm just going to kind of hunt in this general area, so I know for a fact this is a heavy traffic area of the outbound Allies planes.
All right, so I've got an aircraft down there. It's moving pretty quick to the west. So I think it might be one of mine. But it also could be an ally running home. And I see a little yellow tail. I think that actually might be a Mustang. We're going to dive in on him once he starts flying straight. Alright, let's go get him. He might be trying to land at that airfield right there. So as long as I take him down before his wheels touch, it's fair play. I think that's exactly what's happening here. I'm trying to grab him before his wheels touch. And I was coming in way too hot. Let's see if he uh, aborts his landing. Committed to the landing. So now I'm at a pretty vulnerable state right here. Alright, I've got another aircraft off my right wing. Now I've given up my my height and my energy advantage there. But that's normally how I would how I would secure my uh, my first couple kills, just like that. Except don't miss. You know, it's probably not very exciting for you guys to watch, but. That's why I'm making this video. Alright, let's see who this is. And that is a Mustang, and he knows I'm an enemy. Let's see what we can do. So this should be a pretty fair fight. We're both kind of at a equal playing field right now. And he's gonna get on my six really quick. Looks like I'm gaining the lead on the turn, though. We're gonna go head on. I'm gonna pull up. And he's gonna have the advantage here. Unless he lost sight of me, which he might have just lost sight of me. Alright, let's see if I can knock a shot on him. Yeah, he must have lost sight of me. He could have uh, possibly taken me down if he made that turn quicker. I get close enough for my 30 mil cannons to do some work. Last too long, you can probably have some buddies come over. And it looks like he's running towards their base. Smart move on him, see that he knew he had the advantage, or he knew I had the advantage. I didn't, I didn't get a This might just a different player, I think. Cool. And that was that was way too close. I tore up that Spitfire, but it almost almost random in the process.
And here's that Mustang. Time to go up. I think he's following me anymore, but it's kind of hard to tell. I'm trying to stay low to not catch any of these guys' attention over here. And if you see stutters, that's from recording. Typically when I'm not recording VR, it's pretty smooth. also really overworked. So I could possibly possibly die before I make it back. And I got one on my side. A lot of maneuverability right now. Do a go up and roll, see if I can catch him. And I'm gonna reverse and head home. While he's climbing, he might have gave me enough time to escape. On my six. Hopefully, I have enough of a lead, though.
almost to my friendly airfields where I'll be a little bit safer. You know, I don't see him. I think it might be alright. Of course, that's what I said last time. down as soon as I can now. Cool. Lucked out on that one. hope this isn't a friendly player up above the airfield here. I'll take my chances. Nope, and it's an enemy. You can see the AA shooting him. So, looks like I'm gonna go somewhere else. Hopefully he hasn't seen me. I don't think he has. Alright, I'm going to try to do a quick emergency landing here. I think he might be diving in on me, it's hard to tell. sloppy landing, but I'll take it. I'm going to park under one of these hangars. Just because some people don't like to play by the rules and they'll, they'll attack you on the airfield. Shut her down. So I got one kill, and I survived. And that's as much as anybody could ask for. So what I'm going to do now is repair the plane, Request and rearm and refuel, Copy. then do it again. So that's just an example of how a typical sortie would go, for me anyways. Like I said, you can kind of play it how you want it, you could fly straight to that uh, fur ball by the black smoke and uh, make quick work of yourself or other people. Alright, that's it then. Peace out.